In the days of the judges, everyone did what was right in their own eyes, until God would raise up one righteous judge to lead Israel for a time. One of the earliest poems ever discovered was that of Deborah. She was the only woman judge of Israel after Joshua and Caleb defeated the Canaanites when Moses brought the Israelites to the Promised Land. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hatzor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harosheth Hagayim, far north in Zananim, near Kedesh. Jael lived in a tent near the great tree with her husband, Heber the Kenite, a metal worker. I hate being so far from my people. At least we are safe, and all these Canaanites with their iron chariots give me plenty of work. I wish there was a way that God could do something about these horrible oppressors. I have an alliance with the king of Hatsor, Jabin. As long as the flag of Hatsor flies at this tent, no Canaanite will harm us. I know, my love. It just all seems hopeless. At least we do not live as slaves like some. Leave the goats and get the milk later. Come to bed. The sky seems off. Yes, my love. Come on, you stinky girl. Go! But Jael felt a kinship to Israel as she was a descendant of the brother-in-law of Moses and wished that some way God could use her to stop the villainous Sisera and his 900 iron chariots. Now, Deborah was a prophet. The wife of Labadoth was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinanim, from Kedesh and Naphtali. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took to winding paths. Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose, a mother in Israel. They said you sent for me. Yes, Barak, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun and lead them up to Mount Tabor. God says, I will lead to you Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army. If you go with me, I will go, but, but if you don't go with me, I won't go. You need a little old lady like me to be there with you. Is it really me that you need? No, it's not that, Deborah. You're very respected in Israel, and your presence holds weight. The Lord is marching before you. Certainly, I will go with you, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. I would assume the glory would go to the person who brought Sisera to his fate. You deserve all the glory, Deborah. So Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. All right, you heard the woman. Everyone move out. I will take our men down to Mount Tabor, as you said, my lord. Are we expecting reinforcements? Yes, soldier. That is exactly what we are expecting. Now go. No looking back. The lord and Deborah are on our side. Yes, my lord. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried to the lord for help. My king, your chariots are fashioned as you requested. Oh, all 900 of them already. Yes, sir. I see. And you added what I asked for? Yes. We added knives to the bottom of the wheels and large 12-foot iron javelins to the back of them. Fantastic. These Israelites haven't been paying their tributes like they're supposed to. I needed to come up with something to put fear in their hearts. They will be terrified, sir. I understand that we're taking the high ground, but what are we going to do about those 900 iron chariots and the knives on the... Have faith, brother. Deborah and our Lord are with us. I do have faith, but I'm also reasonable. You know this guy we're fighting against, right? They say his voice is so strong that when he called loudly, the most solid wall would shake and the wildest animal would fall dead. I have brought the 10,000 men as you asked. We are ready for the Lord to take the enemy, as you said. Go! This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? Soldier, ready your men to go down to the Valley of Jezreel. 
Har Megiddo to fight Sisera. Are you sure, my lord? We have the high ground right now. We're in the hills. Deborah the prophetess has spoken. The Lord will be with us. Look, my lord. Jehovah goes ahead of us as a storm. What's happening? This storm came out of nowhere. General Sisera, the storm. The lightning keeps hitting our iron chariots. We must abandon them. This is madness. No, no. The chariots are our edge. We must... Uh, your funeral, General. Come back here right now, soldier. It's just a little storm. It'll blow right up. The Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword. The sky opened and a deluge of rain filled the valley of Har Megiddo, or Armageddon, until the 900 iron chariots became heavy in the mud. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. The armor that the soldiers wore was like iron weights seamed them into the mud. And the 900 iron chariots with the giant javelins in the back of them were like 900 lightning rods. Sir, they are all on foot. They've left their chariots in the mud. Are you kidding me? They left their prize torture contraptions aside? God truly is on our side today. And the general? On foot, sir, like the others. In the mud. Looks like he's headed north. Well, I guess I'll be killing me a general today. Uh, he's long gone, sir. There's no way to catch him ourselves without getting stuck in the mud. Well, it was a solid victory, at least. It's not over. Deborah said he'd be delivered in her hand, and the victory would be given to a woman. I'm not going to start doubting now. Perhaps another miracle. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Herosheth Hagoyim. And all of Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot with his armor long left in the mud, and even his heavy sword left behind, to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because there was an alliance between J.B. King of Hatzor and the family of Heber the Kenite. Oh, thank the gods of Baal, one of our tents. That's our flag. And just when I thought my luck had run out. Come, my lord. Don't be afraid. I have a fire going, and you are soaked to the bone. Yes, thank you. Here, my lord. This blanket will keep you warm. That was quite a storm. You've traveled far, yes? Don't worry about that. Your husband nearby? He is an iron worker. He makes the iron chariots for King Jabin. Ah, yes, your husband. He's the iron worker. He's the one responsible for these magnificent chariots. Beautiful, aren't they? And here I am... In a home where the Assyrian flag flies high. I've got to be in the right place. I'm thirsty. How about bringing me some water? She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink and covered him up. And he drank it all and began to rub his eyes. <sighs> I don't care if it is warm milk. That's about what I need right now. Thank you so much for your hospitality. He's getting tired. The warm milk is working. Soon he will be fast asleep. And the Lord will have his day. Stand in the doorway of the tent. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there, say, no. As you wish, my Lord. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. Go boast before your father in hell and tell him that you have fallen into the hands of a woman. Just then, Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, I will show you the man you're looking for. So Barak went in with Jael, and there lay Sisera with a tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. 
and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against J.B. King of Canaan until they destroyed him. Back in Canaan, the general's mother, with the wisest of her ladies, frantically paced back and forth, looking through the lattice of her palace for her son to return. Why is this chariot so long in coming? Why is the clatter of his chariots delayed? Are they not finding and dividing the spoils, a woman or two for each man? Colorful garments as plunder for Sisera, colorful garments embroidered, highly embroidered garments for my neck. All this as plunder? So may all your enemies perish, Lord, but may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. 